Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. When appropriate, government can intervene in the market in the form of an excise tax in order to manipulate the price and quantity of a product to meet social goals and values. An excise tax is a per unit duty levied on specific goods. These taxes are aimed at decreasing the production of a good or service that has a negative effect on society. Essentially, the government is fining a firm for producing an undesirable good or service. The goal of an excise tax is to minimize social cost or negative externalities associated with the production of a good. Excise taxes may also be used in order to decrease the production of a good that may be overproduced. Here's how it works. Supply and demand in the market for good C has established an equilibrium price of $5 and an equilibrium output of 400 units. However, the production of good C creates negative externalities for society, and the government wants to reduce the harmful effects of good C by limiting the output of good C in the market and making good C more expensive for consumers. To reduce the output in the market, Government imposes a $4 per unit excise tax on firms that produce good C. Firms will be required to pay the government a $4 tax for every unit of good C that they produce. Think of this tax like a fine for every unit of output produced by firms in the market. In order to minimize their tax burden and avoid paying more in taxes, firms will scale back the production of good C. The fewer units they produce, the less they pay in taxes to the government. As a result, firms will produce lesser quantities of good C decreasing the supply of good C in the market. In order to graph the impact of a per unit tax on the price and quantity of a good in the product market, there are exact steps to take. Step 1. To show a decrease in the supply in the market, shift the supply curve to the left in the exact amount of the per unit tax. Take the amount of the tax paid by the firm for every unit produced and shift the supply curve to the left so that the space between the supply curves at every quantity in the market equals that amount. Here you can see that the space between the supply curves in the market for good C equals $4, which is the size of the tax paid by firms for every unit of good C produced. Step 2. Establish a new equilibrium in the market at the intersection of the demand curve and the new supply curve after the tax is imposed. From here, we can determine everything we need to know about the impact of this per unit tax on the market for good C. After the $4 per unit tax, the price of good C has increased to $7, and the output in the market has decreased to 200 units. Ultimately, did this per unit tax accomplish its goal? It sure did. By requiring firms to pay a tax for every unit of good C that they produce, the government reduced the equilibrium quantity in the market for good C to 200 units, effectively decreasing the quantity of good C produced and reducing the negative externalities associated with its production. The tax also made good C more expensive making it less accessible to consumers and reducing the quantity consumed in the market. But that's not the end of it. As economists, we want to dive deeper and answer several questions still in front of us. The most important, who pays for this excise tax? Whenever an excise tax is imposed, firms will attempt to pass along a portion of the tax burden onto consumers through product price. However, firms can't pass the entire burden of the tax onto consumers without affecting the quantity demanded in the market. As a result, firms will either split the tax with consumers, pay more themselves, or pass more on to consumers. This is called tax incidence. So how do we discover the answers to all of our tax incidence questions? No worries, I'll show you. Let's go back to the market for good C. After a $4 per unit excise tax was levied on firms, the supply of good C decreased, leading to an increase in the price of good C to $7, and a decrease in the output of good C to 200 units. From here, we can determine the tax incidence in the market using several steps. Step 1. We can determine the total revenue for firms in the market for good C before and after the tax. Before the tax, firms in the market earned a total revenue of $2,000. However, after the tax was imposed, the total revenue for firms that produce good C decreased to $1,400. Step 2. 
We can calculate the total tax revenue generated by the $4 per unit tax imposed on firms in the industry. When we shifted the supply curve to the left to show a decrease in the supply of goods C, we shifted the supply curve in the exact amount of the per unit tax. This means that the space between the supply curves at every quantity in the market will equal the amount of the per unit tax on firms in the industry. Here you can see that the space between the supply curves in the market for goods C equals $4 which is the size of the tax levied on firms for every unit of goods seed that they produce. Since firms are required to pay $4 to the government for every unit of goods seed that they produce after the tax is imposed, we can take the amount of the per unit tax and multiply it by the quantity of output that firms will produce even after the tax. From here, we can determine that $800 in total tax revenue will be generated by the excise tax in the market for goods seed. Step 3. We can calculate the net revenue kept by firms after they pay the government the tax revenue they owe for producing good C. When selling 200 units of good C at a price of $7, firms in the industry earned a total revenue of $1,400. However, firms are obligated to pay the government $4 for every unit of good C produced in the market, and so firms in the industry owe $800 in tax revenue to the government. While firms may have sold each unit of good C at a buyer's price of $7, they only get to keep a seller's price of $3 per unit after paying the government the $4 per unit they owe in taxes. In all, we can subtract the total tax revenue of $800 from the total revenue earned of $1,400 and determine that firms will keep a net revenue of $600 after paying taxes on every unit of good C that they produced. Step 4. We can also now determine tax incidence, or exactly how firms in the industry share the tax burden with consumers. Before the tax, the equilibrium price set by supply and demand in the market for good C was $5. However, after the $4 per unit excise tax was imposed, the price of good C rose to $7. Because the price paid by buyers in the market increased by $2, we can conclude that firms split the burden of the tax evenly with consumers, making consumers pay $2 of the $4 tax through higher product price, and paying the remaining $2 themselves. This also means that we can determine that the portion of the total tax revenue paid by consumers in the market is $400. The other half of the tax burden was paid directly by the producers, who will only keep the seller's price of $3 per unit after paying the $4 per unit in taxes to the government. As a result, the portion of the total tax revenue paid by firms in the market is also $400. The sharing of the tax burden between consumers and firms is heavily influenced by the elasticity of demand in the market. Elasticity refers to how responsive consumers are to changes in product prices. When products are essential to consumers' needs, demand is more inelastic and consumers tend to buy them, even at higher prices. And so, firms will attempt to pass along a larger portion of the tax burden on consumers through product price. When products are luxuries and unessential to consumer needs, demand is more elastic and consumers are more responsive to price changes, causing them to buy significantly fewer quantities at higher prices. As a result, firms will be forced to pay more of the tax themselves in order to keep product prices lower in the market. Let's take a look. Here we see the market for good F. Assume that good F is a product required to fulfill a need and is therefore very important to consumers. As a result, demand for good F is generally inelastic. Supply and demand in the market for good F has established an equilibrium price of $7 and an equilibrium output of 1,000 units. Then, the government imposes a $3 per unit excise tax on firms that produce good F, meaning firms will be required to pay the government a $3 tax for every unit of good F that they produce. In order to minimize their tax burden and avoid paying more in taxes, firms will scale back the production of good F, decreasing the supply of good F in the market. To show the impact of this excise tax on the market for good F, we'll shift the supply curve to the left in the exact amount of the per unit tax. We'll then establish a new market equilibrium at the intersection of the demand curve and the new supply curve after the tax. After the $3 per unit tax, the price of good F has increased to $9, and the output in the market has decreased to 900 units. From here, we can determine that firms in the market earned a total revenue of $7,000 before the tax. However, after the tax was imposed, 
the total revenue for firms that produce good F has increased to $8,100. The tax revenue generated by this per unit tax is $2,700, and the net revenue kept by firms in the industry is $5,400. We can also now determine how firms in the industry share the tax burden with consumers. Before the tax, the equilibrium price set by supply and demand in the market for good F was $7. However, after the $3 per unit excise tax was imposed, the price of good F rose to $9. Because the price paid by buyers in the market increased by $2, we can conclude that consumers paid two-thirds of the tax burden because they paid $2 of the $3 tax through higher product price. This also means that the portion of the total tax revenue paid by consumers in the market was $1,800. The remaining one-third of the tax burden was paid directly by the producers, who kept the seller's price of $6 per unit after paying $3 per unit in taxes to the government. As a result, the portion of the total tax revenue paid by firms in the market is $900. Because the demand for good F is more inelastic, consumers are relatively unresponsive to price changes in the market. This means they'll buy good F even if it's more expensive. Knowing this, firms passed a majority of the tax burden on consumers through an increase in product price and paid less of it themselves. Here we see the market for good S. Assume the good S is a luxury good and is not required to fulfill a need. As a result, demand for good S is generally elastic. Supply and demand in the market for good S has established an equilibrium price of $10 and an equilibrium output of 500 units. Then, the government imposes a $4 per unit excise tax on firms that produce good S, meaning firms will be required to pay the government a $4 tax for every unit of good S that they produce. In order to minimize their tax burden and avoid paying more in taxes, firms will scale back the production of good S, decreasing the supply of good S in the market. To show the impact of this excise tax on the market for good S, we'll shift the supply curve to the left in the exact amount of the per unit tax. We'll then establish a new market equilibrium at the intersection of the demand curve and the new supply curve after the tax. After the $4 per unit tax, the price of good S has increased to $11, and the output in the market has decreased to 300 units. From here, we can determine that firms in the market earned a total revenue of $5,000 before the tax. However, after the tax was imposed, the total revenue for firms that produce good S decreased to $3,300. The tax revenue generated by this per unit tax is $1,200. And the net revenue kept by firms in the industry is $2,100. We can also determine how firms in the industry shared the tax burden with consumers. Before the tax, the equilibrium price set by supply and demand in the market for good S was $10. However, after the $4 per unit excise tax was imposed, the price of good S rose to $11. Because the price paid by buyers in the market increased by $1, we can conclude that consumers paid a fourth of the tax burden because they paid $1 of the $4 tax through a higher product price. This also means that the portion of the total tax revenue paid by consumers in the market was $300. The remaining three-fourths of the tax burden was paid directly by the producers, who keep the seller's price of $7 per unit after paying $4 per unit in taxes to the government. As a result, the portion of the total tax revenue paid by firms in the market is $900. Because the demand for good S is more elastic, consumers are more responsive to price changes in the market. This means even a small change in price level will significantly change their consumption of good S. Knowing this, firms passed a smaller portion of the tax burden on consumers through an increase in product price and paid a majority of it themselves. And that's excise taxes and tax incidents. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy my channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss video, or you can click here for my price elasticity video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.